Hernandez, and welcome to A Corace Strecesima Quarta, or video 34. Today we're going to be talking about third declension eye stems, and of course the irregular noun wis, which means force or power. So now let's take a look first at what a third declension eye stem is. Now, essentially the simple rule is that a third declension eye stem is a noun that has slightly tweaked endings. For the most part, it looks exactly the same and you probably won't even notice really the difference between an eye stem and a non-eye stem uh, word. The higher difficulty part is recognizing a noun as an eye stem before you actually see it in action. And this is doing so from the dictionary entry. So for the most part, eye stems aren't really that dramatic, they're just a slight change of the ending that you will see in certain cases, not all the cases, um, and really it will be more of a um, challenge when it comes to composition, just in terms of being able to recognize it, but even so it's really, it's fairly simple for you to figure out, and I think you guys will get this pretty easily. So first let's take a look at what is different. Uh, the general pattern is essentially you sometimes see an eye. Uh, in the endings. Now with masculine and feminine nouns all the endings are exactly the same that you already know for third declension except for the following. Genitive plural is going to have I before the UM so it's IUM now instead of just UM. Accusative plural is going to have a weird alternative ending. There's still the ES that you're always going to see is but sometimes you're going to see an IS occasionally. This is going to be when you start reading texts that haven't been um, edited from their original form as much. Wheelock isn't really going to use um, the IS ending for accusative plural, so you don't need to worry about it as much this year, but um, next year towards the end of the uh, fourth quarter and of course Latin 3, you're going to see a lot more uh, texts that aren't edited as well as much so you're going to see that is accusative plural ending i'm sure your teacher will bring it up to you again when you get to that point but just something to keep in the back of your mind neuter nouns do have a little bit more of an except of a tweak to them but it's still mostly the same except for genitive plural again just like with the masculine feminine you're going to have the ium instead of just the um the nominative, accusative, and vocative plural is going to end in IA instead of just the A. So again, we just add an I before the ending. The ablative singular is the only one that's going to be important to really make note of. So I would star this in your notes, highlight it, whatever you can do to draw attention to it, because it will end in I instead of E. So that's a key difference that you're going to see. I is now going to be an option for that ablative ending. So now let's take a look at some examples. So here we have kiwis kiwis, which is a masculine and feminine noun, which means citizen. Um, it is an I stem word, and we'll get a, into why it's, how it's recognizable as an I stem in, a, in the next section of this lesson. But the first bit, you just need to take a look and see how it declines. So you notice it's pretty much the same that you're used to. The only difference is in the genitive plural when you have, where you have the I-U-M. And then in the accusative, you notice there is both a kiwis and ending as well as a kiwis. But otherwise, as I said, mostly the same. You probably won't even notice it when you're translating. Um, when you come to the neuter, it gets a little bit more eye heavy, um, especially when you get to the ablative singular, as we talked about on the previous slide, where the E has transformed itself into an E, an I. So it's mari instead of mare, okay? Otherwise, again, it's Maria, Marium in the plural. Nothing that's too uh, earth-shaking there. However, there is one rule breaker, and that is wis. So wis is an irregular noun, so it does not follow really the pattern as much, and it also has an irregular stem as well. Um, so what we're going to do is we're just going to look at what it, uh, how it declines, and I need you guys to write this down in your notes. It is important, and I would start it, because it is a word that shows up frequently in um, Latin, and it's also, and because it's irregular, it's going to be important to remember how it uh, declines. So this is what it looks like. Uh, it starts out kind of normal, um, although V is your stem, is a little bit short, right? Um, but then the accusative, instead of V-E-M, it's WIM, V-I-M, and the ablative, it's going to be V-I, instead of E. Then you have 
In the plural, the stem changes from just V to V-I-R. And I'm sure you're thinking, well, how am I going to tell the difference between wis wis and weir? Well, remember, weir, meaning man, is actually a second declension noun, not third declension. So this will be one of those times where it's going to be really important to pay attention to what declension the noun is ending in to tell the difference between them. Um, so wis being a third declension word will be easier to tell the difference, will be easy to tell the difference between when you're talking about men versus strength. So again, the genitive is, or the genitive plural is the uh, secondary exception is the IUM, but other than the stem changing, the endings are the same that you are used to. So now let's take a look at some rules for recognizing I stems. So the basic rules for recognizing I stems are really kind of patterns that show up. So the first pattern we're going to look at is a masculine feminine. Normally it's when you have the nominative ending in IS or ES and it looks almost exactly the same to the genitive. So when you have like conus, conus, which means dog, it's both, it's the same in both the nominative and the genitive form. And then sometimes you see ES instead of IS. So either it's going to be exactly the same in the nominative and genitive form or the nominative form will end in ES, but otherwise will be exactly the same. So that's the first pattern. The second pattern is that you're going to have a one-syllable nominative word that ends in S or X. Now, this is usually the exception. An exception to this that we already know is Rex Regis. Rex Regis is not an I stem, um, so that's an exception to the rule. And with the, both of the masculine and feminine patterns, again, it's a usually, not an always. Uh, the third pattern, however, with neuter words only, isn't always, for the, as far as I can remember. <laughs> so, nominatives that end in AL, AR, or E, all will follow the neuter I stem pattern. So, they're at least really regular, and you can apply that rule as a given for those. So, next we're going to actually practice using these rules. So, make sure you have these written down, and then get ready to see if you can figure out whether or not these nouns are I stems based off of their dictionary endings that I give you. So, take a look at this list of words. We have eight words, and I've given you the nominative and then the genitive singular, just like you would see in a dictionary entry. So take a moment, look at these lists, write it down, whether it's I stem or regular, pause the video, then resume to check your work. All right, so now let's take a look at the actions. So, consul consulis is a regular regular third declension word. It's not ending in IS or ES. Um, it doesn't have, in the nominative, it doesn't have one syllable. You know, it doesn't end in S or X. And it's not a neuter word, but even if it was, it's ending in UL, not AL. Um, so, regular. The second word is an I stem, because again, it's the two forms, nubes and nubis, look really, really similar. The first one ends in ES, though, and the second one ends in IS, but that's fine. That's that part of that ES slash IS um, indicator in the nominative, so this is an I stem. Herbs, herbis, herbs, one syllable, ends in S, so therefore I stem. Rex regis, remember, this is regular because I mentioned it on the previous slide as being an, not a follower of this rule. Animal, animalis, this is ending in AL, and it's neuter, I stem. Mare ends in E, and it was also your example from the previous slide, I stem. Nox, one syllable, ends in X, I stem. Caput, capitus, doesn't end, the, doesn't end in the X or the S. Well, it's not one syllable, so you can rule out that pattern. It, it is not ending in all A or um, R, so it doesn't follow that pattern. And then it doesn't look almost exactly like it's genitive, so again, doesn't follow the pattern, so it's regular. So that is it for this acrosis. Um, don't forget to fill out your Google form and bring any questions that you have to class. Voila, tail